And you can't feel this at all? That feels no, right? No, no. So this patient's coming in. This is kind of a somewhat interesting case. He's got a fluctuant mass of the posterior aspect of his neck. Now he's had this, he had a big injury back in the 90s where he fractured one of his cervical spine. And it's unclear what this actually is. He's had it ultrasounded and there's a fluctuant mass that's here. Could be residual scar tissue, could be hematoma even that far out that's, that's calcified. Could be a cyst that's formed, but it bugs him, it gives him some discomfort. So we're gonna incise this, see if we can at least clean the area out um, or extract something we need to be extracting. So you can tell here he's had a circumferential block done with, with lidocaine and then we've anesthetized over the surface where I'm gonna be incising. This is potentially redundant, but again, we do it just to make sure it's not uh, an issue for us. And can't feel that at all or just pressure? No, sir. So, this is not an infected field, so we should have very good anesthesia. So he shouldn't feel anything more than gentle pressure. And I always talk to my patients, if they do, we always add more. The, the area you'll have trouble with isn't the superficial skin, because this is obviously all frozen. It's when you get deeper with tissues where patients might feel something. So we want to make sure that they're aware of that, so they're not just grinning and bearing it while they're sitting there. So again, this is our number 15 blade. So I'm going to do a linear incision here. You can always debate, again, doing an elliptical incision versus linear. And if you've done these type of procedures or watched these type of procedures before, you'll be aware of the Langer's lines which minimize scarring. They run in a horizontal fashion here. So this is why we're doing this. So here I'm comfortable incising it a little bit more than I normally would because it feels different. It doesn't feel like it's very superficial. And you're comfortable? Yes, sir. Because you can't even feel any pressure or anything. So. That's good. So this is what I want to be getting down to. So you can see here, that's down to hypodermis, which is that tissue that's through here. Because at the very least, he's, he's probably got some scar potential that's there. So even if I'm just taking this tissue that's out, and then sealing that back closed, he, he may be comfortable enough that this is no longer an issue for us. So now I'm just going to dissect it on the other side. Just dab that for me, Rada. I'm still feeling comfortable? Oh, yeah, it's fine. I don't know what's, I think I'm blocking that one. Mm -hmm. Just dab that for me. So this we're just trying to achieve the same thing on the other side. We're sending it to dissect down to the hypodermis, which is the fatty layer. As you can see through there, just like that. should be able to tell so this is all fatty tissue so that's all hypodermis it's there no pain at all no 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 so i'm just gonna do the same thing from this corner So what we want to be doing is just sort of, we're above all the muscle layers, the big nerves. So when you're, I wonder if it's more lipomatous. Could be. Yeah, it could be. So it looks like it just could just be a lipoma that's sitting there. I said it could be a lipoma, didn't I say that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it could be right. What is a lipoma? It's just a, like a fatty tumor, a fatty aggregation. Okay. It looks like that's what it is. Is that something that people get, like, I guess not often, but it's not really rare or anything like that, right? No, not rare. Um, just yours is in a slightly more sensitive spot. Okay. Do you have those other scissors that we picked up? Yeah, the curve one. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
No pain there at all? No, 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 no. You just feel like a little bit of pressure, but nothing uncomfortable or hurting or anything. So anything beyond that, let me know. Yeah, for sure. So lipomas are the one thing that when we're doing this, they can have a big back end to them. Would that be like considered like a root or something? Uh, not, not sort of. It, and just because of that, um, the anesthetic, we want to make sure that we have good anesthesia behind it. Okay. You're okay there? Oh, yeah. So this is very tough here. So this looks like a combination of scar tissue. So the only thing I tell you here is just want to make sure that you're seeing the tissues that you're actually dealing with. Just add that for me. You okay there? Yeah. You can see through, see through there, that's all just adhesion right through there. That very fine tissue there. sometimes see the difference this is just subcutaneous fat here but this is more aggregated this is where it's more like pulmonous tissue through here so we'll send that off I don't anticipate any issues there now before dr. Butler stitches this up this week over on patreon he removes a cyst from this man's cheek here's a little clip as always the link to the patreon page will be in the caption of this video enjoy the rest So here I'll just irrigate these out. And you should be able to see here if I look down in. So this is just above a muscular layer that's here. That's where the muscle fibers form. And that's all just fatty tissue there. Little remnants through here that we could just cook those out. So here, there's always this debate about, um, you know, what's going to form a hematoma, what's not. No, it doesn't hurt when I do that? No. There you go. No pain there? No. So this is always the area I'm concerned with when I'm uh, not hurting. Nope. You can see the muscle, though, contracts a bit when I do that. It's right over top of it. So any active bleeds, you want to make sure that you actually cauterize those or clip them or actually uh, tie them off. But small amount of oozing won't create a big problem. It actually sometimes leads to better healing. And these upper ones through here, even though I'll do a little bit here, these will be captured by my stitch. So I'm really not worried about those areas. When you're doing this type of thing, it's all back in through here they have to worry about because obviously if I put my stitch in through here it's going to tampen out these structures but it's not going to carry down through the back so the posterior aspects are where you want to be careful. So I'm just going to syringe this out. Again not as hugely relevant this is a sterile saline um, when you're talking about removing a lipoma um, but if we're doing cysts and they rupture you certainly want to make sure that's clean. And we want to irrigate with some degree of pressure and in different directions because you're trying to clean it off the surface. Now this is the point where if we were doing an infected lesion, we would want to be doing our swab now if we were worried about MRSA or these type of things. But we take one last look through here, just to take a look for any active bleeds. And that looks pretty clean all the way around. 
So then the debate becomes, do we need to put internal stitches in, dermal stitches? This is one of the advantages of a linear incision. So we've taken mass out and because it's sitting so nicely, I would just do the superficial stitches. This should, this should heal nicely for us. So this is foral proline. This is a non dissolver stitch type. There are others. Um, I like to use nylon sometimes as well. I mentioned in another video, there are a couple studies that show that nylon's a little bit more inflammatory. Wouldn't be an issue so much here, but if we were doing a lesion on someone's face, those couple studies that show that make me respect enough that I usually choose to use proline if I can. So you should see how that lies nicely like that. So again, if I curve it, that's where it's not supposed to lie. This is the surface you want to have like that. So here's your V again, three loops so it locks. Grab the tail, pull it. You can actually see how I caught myself there. And what I mean by that is I pulled it too quickly so it didn't sit nicely. So I just undid it and then it sits back like that. Push that down for me. So you can always correct things in mid, or let's even say I pulled it tight and I wasn't happy with it. Um, it's not the end of the world just to cut out a stitch and then redo it. Don't feel you're bound just because you put one in. So here, when I put my needle in, I always turn it so it's perpendicular, so it has more driving force. You'll be surprised as you do these more, some people's tissues are really, really quite thick and heavy and they won't drive through very easily, especially manual laborers, which we see a fair amount in the area where I work. You're still okay? Oh, yeah. I could probably fall off a free part. <laughs> That's good. So you'll see me pushing the edges back in a little bit. The reason why I'm doing that, you want the edges to oppose. So if it's, so if it's gaping a bit like here, I wanna make sure I'm pushing that edge in a little bit so that those opposing ends are meeting together. That's what'll make it seal better. Sealed nicely, no sticking stitches, that should heal well. Very good.